Hey there and welcome to another Brexit Explained video. You'd be forgiven for thinking we've made this video before. We speak about Brexit a whole lot on this channel. And we also talk about no deal and Brexit votes a lot. In fact, only last week we made a video about how MPs have made it harder for the Prime Minister to force a no deal through the House of Commons. But what happened in Parliament yesterday was even more impactful and even more important. Although it's literally my job to hype up these videos, it's not an exaggeration to say that this could fundamentally impact the future of Brexit. Before that though, I want to take a quick second to thank our Patreon backers. All of our backers make it possible for us to create videos really quickly and react to events like this. If you want to support the channel's growth and help us create more videos, you can back us on Patreon. In return, you get all kinds of perks, like early access to videos, including this one which was shared with patrons first, as well as discounts on our merch store, exclusive behind the scenes podcasts, and much more. Find out more about what you'll get from backing us by clicking the link in the description. So enough build up, what actually happened in the House of Commons yesterday? Well, the whole thing is all about prorogation. Boris Johnson, who will almost certainly become prime minister next week, has said that he would prorogue parliament if necessary. Now I know we've discussed this a whole load of times, but if you're not familiar with prorogation, or you just need a refresh, here's a very quick overview. Prorogation is basically the ending of a parliamentary session, and refers to the time between the end of one parliamentary session and the beginning of the next one. Essentially, the current plan here is if Parliament won't approve a no deal, the Prime Minister would just suspend Parliament, and leave it in this prorogue state until the 31st of October deadline passes, and then bring them back when it's too late for them to stop it. Prorogation is technically a royal prerogative, which means that it's formally the right of the monarch. In reality, the royal prerogative is usually exercised by the Prime Minister, although it does depend on precedent. As I mentioned, we made a whole video about prorogation, so if you're interested, you can check that out. There's a link in the description. So that's prorogation, the process of temporarily shutting down Parliament so that they can't vote against a no deal, effectively forcing through a no deal. This is something that Boris Johnson has said he still wants to keep on the table. That's because he thinks it's important that no deal is an option during negotiations. Otherwise, he believes that the EU won't have enough incentive to give the UK a good deal. The problem he has is the majority of Parliament don't like the idea of no deal, and it's almost certain that if he tried to push it through Parliament, they'd end up rejecting it. So shutting down Parliament, letting time run out, and effectively triggering no deal is a good workaround. MPs clued up to this, and not wanting to be overridden, they tried to make prorogation harder. In fact, that's exactly what we covered last week. MPs voted for an amendment which would make prorogation more difficult. Not impossible, but more difficult to execute. We now come to amendment 17 to clause 3 Dominic Grieve to move formally. The question is that amendment 17 be made. Division! Clear the lobby. The eyes to the right, 289. The nose to the left, 293. Noes have it. As you just saw, that amendment passed by one vote, and with it, the odds of no deal slipped slightly. Last week, we also discussed how one of the amendments could get sent back to the House of Commons by the House of Lords, and that's exactly what happened here. This amendment, voted on yesterday, would make proroguing Parliament even more difficult stating that if Parliament had been prorogued on this timescale, they would have to be recalled. The government's official position was to reject the amendment. However, they did have cross-party supporters. In fact, the bill was tabled by a group led by Labour MP Hilary Benn and Conservative MP Alistair Burt. When the amendment made it to the floor of the House of Commons, this is what happened. I am sure that we are all Democrats here, first, last and always. So even though I and many others originally voted Remain in the EU referendum three years ago. I have since become, I hope, and many others have become, strong and doughty backers of the democratic decision to leave. Now, many of us would far prefer to leave with a sensible deal, but if that isn't possible and it comes down to a choice between no deal and no Brexit, then reluctantly but firmly, I choose no deal. I'm sorry, I really don't, I really don't have time. I'm down to my last 90 seconds. We've been going at this for three years, Mr Speaker. The country sent us all a very clear message at the polls in May that they want this done. We have reached a narrowing funnel 
where our choices are getting fewer and fewer. We are running out of road. The time and voters' tolerance for us failing to address that central issue is running out. So the problem with this amendment for many of us isn't about more or less democracy. It is that it is pretending to be democratic, but in reality it is trying to prevent the democratic referendum decision from ever happening at all. It's a heavily discussed under the business of the House order of the 8th of July. I must now bring proceedings on Lord's amendments to a conclusion. The question is that Amendment A to Lord's Amendment 1 be made. As many as have that opinion say aye. 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 Of the contrary, no. no. Division! Clear the lobby. Order. Order. The eyes to the right, 315. The nose to the left, 274. Oh. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Unlock. Order. So as you just saw, MPs voted to accept the amendment, passing with 315 votes to 274. This decisive victory was achieved by MPs on both sides of the aisle, with 17 Conservative MPs openly rebelling and voting in favour of the amendment. In addition to this, five Cabinet members reportedly abstained from the vote. Possibly more interestingly, candidate for Tory leader Jeremy Hunt also didn't vote. In a tweet about the accident, he commented that his position was that Parliament should not restrict the hands of an incoming government in this way, and remains opposed to how Parliament voted. So beyond the politics of who voted for the amendment, what does its passage actually mean for Brexit going forward? Well, it's certainly bad news for Boris Johnson, someone who wants to ensure that no deal and prorogation remained on the table. This vote means that Johnson has lost this fight before even getting the keys to number 10, and his options now are more limited if he wants to force the UK into accepting a no-deal Brexit. Prorogation isn't completely impossible, but assuming Johnson isn't willing to ignore this law, it's certainly less likely now. A quick footnote, this whole amendment is attached to a bill about the Northern Irish government. Because it's attached to that bill, this amendment will only be relevant if the Northern Irish government doesn't reform. That's because if they do, then the bill this amendment is associated with would become redundant, simultaneously making this amendment redundant. This isn't that likely to happen, but it is a caveat worth noting. The big thing this demonstrates is that an early general election is more likely than we might have previously thought. Johnson has said that he wants to avoid the issue of a general election until Brexit has been delivered, but it's possible that he'll have no choice. As we said, 17 Conservative MPs openly voted in favour of this amendment, rebelling against the government, and five cabinet members did the same, if you ignore Hunt's little mistake. This kind of rebellion isn't good for a new Prime Minister, especially considering that the Conservatives don't even have a majority on their own. Even with their alliance with the DUP, they only have the most razor-thin majority, and with the Brecon and Radnorshire by-election coming up, they're likely to lose another MP. Brexit would never have been an easy thing to deliver, but with a majority this small, and a rebellious party willing to vote against the government, it's looking near impossible. Because of that, it's fairly easy to see why Johnson might end up being forced into calling a general election, to try and get a real majority. All of this doesn't make no deal impossible though. Remember, it does continue to be the default outcome if no progress is made. MPs can vote against it all they want, but if there's no deal agreed, or no extension negotiated before the 31st of October, then the UK will still fall out of the EU without a deal. This does make no deal less likely, but it doesn't make it impossible by any means. Of course, we'll keep you updated on this, the Tory leadership election, Brexit more generally, and more EU and UK news, so make sure you're subscribed to be kept up to date. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. You can also find bonus content across our social accounts simply by searching for TLDR News.